Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for October 7th, 2020. My goodness, we had a tumultuous day yesterday with a lot of back and forth, crazy wild price action in the market as we reacted to the political news around stimulus. The market had been ramping up and ramping up and ramping up um, in anticipation of stimulus and stimulus talks. And then we heard from the president that the deal is off, there is no stimulus, and they're not going to renegotiate until the end of the year. However, the president's coming out and saying he still supports direct payments to the public of $1,200 and a bailout and is encouraging Congress to get that done. But he is not willing to go ahead with the big package that the other side has promoted. In fact, he went on to, to kind of say they were negotiating in poor faith and that um, they disagree and he disagreed with that big a package. So um, uh, more whipsaws is what we have to deal with. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we grab our, maybe an adult beverage this morning because of this whipsaw, settle into our Comfy office chairs, and let's get ready for the hump day edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So this morning, if you're kind of, um, if, if you've got whipsaw or, or whiplash, I should say, um, in the market after watching this wild and crazy market um, gyrate around, you're not the only one. And it's frustrating. It's very, very frustrating. I want to point out a couple things in the mar or in the chart that I think are very, very important that may help you with this kind of crazy wild price action. Now, one of the things that I talked about yesterday is to watch carefully the price resistance in the chart. And um, although the market was going up yesterday, I was not a heavy buyer in the market because of that price resistance. That really saved me um, considerably yesterday when the market whipped the other direction. One of the rules I follow is I do not buy stocks at price resistance. And that rule um, saved me yesterday. Um, now, I understand there's an awful lot of pain out there. There's probably some anger um, out there today. But let's keep in mind that this is the political silly season. That, And I've, I've mentioned this many times before, that the market is likely to be very, very sensitive to any of the political news and we should expect this kind of wild volatility to continue clear through the election so it just happened to be over stimulus and it happened to to be over um you know something that the market was really um uh, pricing into the market in great hopes that they were going to get this big check. And um, certainly now they are um, trying to figure out what this means uh, on the path forward. Um, what we do have in the chart that's very disappointing is we have an ugly bearish engulfing candle. And that bearish engulfing candle comes into play directly at price resistance in the chart. And unfortunately, um, that um, came very, very close here on the Dow to break down below that 50-day moving average. I'm guessing a lot of folks got hurt by this, a lot of whipsaw. And then this morning, we are trying to whip back up, even though the path of stimulus still is uncertain whether Congress will even step up and, and do anything or pass these little stop measures um, is completely uncertain yet. But here we go again. We're going to pump it up and uh, try to attract as much money into this. And I gotta ask you, how many times, how many times do we fall for this? Or how many, or when do we finally say enough is enough? I'm gonna stand aside, I'm gonna be careful, I'm gonna protect my capital, because there's no guarantee we can't whip 
back and forth in this market for the next four weeks as they battle over stimulus. So be very, very careful here, guys. It's nice to see the bounce back up. We needed that um, little bounce back up. But at the same time, we have more issues that are coming down the pipeline that could create considerable volatility. So plan your risk carefully. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY happened to close below its 50-day moving average, um, actually failing directly at price resistance in the chart. We also have this possibility of an inverted head and shoulders that could be uh, forming here on the SPY, but the tremendous volatility in this market is going to be probably continue to be very, very difficult and challenging for most traders. It really has become more of a day traders market. Swing traders, position traders um, are going to find this very, very challenging and very difficult likely to trade. We don't know whether or not we will get a stimulus. And although we're gapping up this morning, holding that 50-day moving average, which is bullish, we have to be very, very careful how we plan forward. So watch that closely. Could be a lot of back and forth. And I plan to do a whole lot more just standing on the side and trading very lightly if I do trade because I have no edge here. And when I have no edge in the market because of the volatility in the whip, I want to do the first job that a trader needs to do, and that is protect my capital. When I have an uncertain path forward, I want to protect my capital. I don't have to trade every day. I don't have to put risk in this market. I can stand aside and I can watch and wait until better price action um, shows itself. So consider that as um, a possible course of action to just wait, be patient. We don't have to put risk in this market when there's so much uncertainty ahead. Let's take a look at the Qs. QQQ also closing back down below its 50-day moving average. And then we also got another bombshell yesterday, the House Democrats coming out and directly accusing um, Alphabet, Apple, Amazon, and Facebook of enjoying uh, monopoly status and suggest big changes. Now, we know with those big tech firms, they hold a significant weight in the indexes. They hold a massive weight in the Dow. They hold massive weights in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ indexes. And should those companies come under fire, it could be very, very difficult to see the markets rally in that kind of environment. Now, I don't know how fast or how furious they're gonna come forward with this, but certainly yesterday there was a bit of an attack here on the tech side that may create some uncertainty. And notice that although we are gapping up in the SPY and the Qs this morning to hold on to that 50-day moving average, we're coming nowhere near recovering um, yesterday's sell-off. And let's keep in mind that sell-off occurred right here at price resistance. We also have that hint of a possible inverted head and shoulders pattern here in the Qs, but we certainly are not out of the woods here, and we should um, be very, very careful how we approach forward. Um, you know, fool me once, you know, the, you know the old phrase, right? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And let's not get fooled again. Let's not jump right back into the danger zone here um, when we have an uncertainty as to whether or not there will be any stimulus going forward. Let's take a look at IWM. Now, IWM um, held up quite well yesterday. The Russell did well and is popping back up this morning, um, holding well. As a matter of fact, I have a bear call credit spread on this um, chart that I will likely have to close if this stays up here uh, today because I was looking at this price resistance to hold us down. Well, what's happening is we had a pretty good move in the financials and a little bit of a rebound in the oil sector. Unfortunately, the oil sector is getting kind of damaged by the stimulus news today. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out throughout the day. I expect quite a little bit of more uh, quite a bit more volatility um, going forward. So we'll see how this plays out, but um, looking much better than the other indexes and held well above its 50-day moving average, trying to recover 
some levels of support in here. And this is a big resistance area in the chart, huge. So keep a close eye on that. If we can recover that in IWM and maybe get the Russell participating with the rest of the market, that would be a pretty good sign. Um, watch that close. Let's take a look at the VIX. VIX um, has been one of those perplexing things, continues to be that. Notice even with all of that turmoil yesterday, um, we were not able to break out above the 200-day moving average. We came really close yesterday on the rally of retesting the 50-day moving average. We continue to be bounded by that with these big swings back and forth. Guys, we just have to be careful. It, it has never happened in my career that I can remember that we have seen new market highs being created when the VIX is running somewhere between 25 and 30 handles. I've, I've never seen it. Um, and I'm not sure that anyone has. Um, this is a new place. Um, wild volatility, lots of danger as we continue to press and press and press, trying to um, uh, pump out those new highs. And, and I'm just not sure that um, all of this, um, all of this pushing is a good idea. Um, as we move toward this election. Just be really, really careful. Let's take a look at T2122. Unfortunately, T2122 is still suggesting, even after that big swing, still suggesting that we are up here in the bearish reversal zone um, in the chart. We had pushed up, we were actually way up here yesterday, nearly to the 100 level, um, as we kept pushing and pushing and hoping and hoping for a stimulus deal. And um, the whip saw yesterday pulled us back pretty significantly um, in the chart. But let's note that we're still relatively elevated here and that uncertainty on stimulus uh, as it continues to swirl around. Um, uh, don't be too surprised if we struggle um, up in this area for a bit. And don't be so too surprised if we actually get more pullback in the market with the uncertainty that we see moving forward. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Our economic calendar has a few things on it that we'll want to pay attention to. It's an awful lot of Fed speak today. We have, first off this morning, we have the petroleum status report, and that could certainly be helpful if we show a decline in supply. But unfortunately, right now, um, oil sector has been quite damaged here recently due to um, all of the um, stimulus talks and, and everything out there and seeing the decline in demand um, with COVID issues starting to creep up. And COVID's back in the news today with several more states bringing in um, more restrictions between because of uh, numbers creeping up. So watch that closely. That could help or hurt us today. Um, it's unclear where that will go. Then we just have a slew of Fed speak. We have Fed speakers um, trotting out all day to talk um, uh, about the market, including the FOMC minutes, which will be coming out at 2 p.m today. Just keep in mind, it's not untypical for the market to become very light and choppy as we wait for the FOMC minutes. So kind of keep that in mind. Be careful rushing in this morning on this gap up because it may go nowhere as we wait for the FOMC. And then also keep in mind, and I want to warn everybody about this, we've been hearing all of these numbers, Disney laying off 28,000, problems in the airlines, problems in the oil um, sectors of layoffs and things beginning to happen, that may start creeping into that jobless number for tomorrow. So um, watch that carefully, plan your risk carefully as we head over and that jobless number comes out tomorrow morning. Hopefully I'm wrong that we don't see that uh, tick up, but it just seems like there could be a possibility. So you'll wanna watch that closely. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar and we have um, seven companies that are verified um, um, will be reporting their quarterly um, results today but really nothing particularly notable 
in those. We do have LW that will be reporting today. We'll want to keep an eye on that. Um, good sized company, been consolidating in quite a range here. Uh, perhaps a good report can finally break one of those ranges, either up or down, and get things moving. So keep an eye on that. It might be kind of a, an interesting report to watch. Um, RPM um, is also, whoops. RPM is um, also reporting today. We'll want to keep an eye on that, especially chemicals. Uh, chemicals have had some good um, bullish moves here um, this year, and you can see a nice little uptrend going on in this chart. Let's watch this up here and see if there is a possibility of uh, this having a good enough earnings report to break out. Um, right now, it's showing kind of a whipsaw here this morning, gapping up and pulling back. That is that is today's candle here in the pre-market. So watch that close. And then SAR, about the only other one that I could come up with that was particularly notable. And also, relatively range bound in this chart maybe we can get some direction here in the earnings report that will resolve some directional issues here on um, sar so with that everyone how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up but before we do that if you guys could do me a favor if you could click that subscribe button on youtube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you'll be notified every time i post one of these videos you know one of the things I get comments on all the time in right way options is that I'm really pretty unemotional about the market. I'm not surprised by the big swings and and I'm not um, reacting um, it, it, to this wild volatility. As a matter of fact, I when I put on a trade, I have a plan. I hold that plan until my plan says it's time to close or whatever. Anything beyond that really doesn't affect me emotionally in the market. Um, that keeps me relatively balanced and hopefully you can see that one of the things that helps me stay balanced is this morning preparation. Um, looking at the indexes, looking at the support, resistance, the technicals of the charts. Um, keeps me grounded in my trading. And if you guys find that helpful, please do me a favor, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment, and also share this video with other folks on your social media platforms. And I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for um, the support. I Never in my wildest dreams would I have thought there were 15,000 people that would be interested in this information. So thank you very, very much. You guys are truly remarkable. Um, let's take a look at some stock setting up. Remember that every time I post a stock in these videos and, and anytime it's just part of the education that I provide, and it's not a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Every trader has to do their own due diligence on these trades and decide whether or not these trades actually fit their trading plan. That being said, let's take a look at Walmart. Walmart, um, we've had retail showing some s significant strength here recently, and Walmart has their new um, membership program going on and really going head to head with um, Amazon. Now, Amazon here now is coming under uh, threat of um, a monopoly attack from Congress, and um, uh, Walmart could benefit from that. Let's take a look at this. We have a nice little upside trend going on here, and I placed another alert. I had an alert in this area. I didn't buy it. I've just been so uncertain about the market itself. I didn't add to my long-term trade. And by the way, just to let you guys know, I do have a bias here because I have have held Walmart um, since all the way back here. See that arrow right there, that bullish candle on this weekly chart? I've held Walmart for that entire period of time trading around that trade and now I want to add to that position so keeping a close eye on this chart watching um, this morning um, Walmart could have that opportunity to kind of shift out here sideways and have that opportunity to maybe pop higher here um, keep a close eye on that I can't tell you for sure when that is going to occur but I've placed an alert here to maybe take an opportunity of catching that trade so watch that close it may have some opportunity in the very near future so um, stay focused um, on that chart also if you take a look at stocks like Target um, Target 
um, has broken through some resistance here in the chart. And we know that all of these online retailers are pushing um, retail sales sooner this year, trying to pump things up. So we may start seeing those come uh, uh, come in sooner than uh, than later and that break higher here in target um, breaking through to blue sky highs and this light little pullback uh, coming back to test trend and support watch that in there for an opportunity for that to move on higher nice looking chart um, when you want to pay attention to take a look at w day w day has been holding up quite well here breaking through some resistance and then losing it um, unable to hold it and then we have found the strength to rally back up and now consolidate that that's a pattern I love to see I love to see a stock that pushes up into a resistance or breaks a resistance and then consolidates that move and I'm looking for that next move up here in the chart so you can see here this nice little consolidating move that possibility that we could start to pop through and notice we have a bit of a trend starting to establish here if that were to move Move um, on up could be a good potential entry into a trade. Been watching VMW. Now, VMW had quite a little volatility yesterday, like everything else, um, due to the market. But as you can see, it has been rising here, these rising lows in this chart, pressing against a rather significant level of price resistance. VMW, if it can break out of there and hold, there may be some upside opportunity here in that chart. Keep a close eye on it. It's looking pretty decent overall. Nike also had a pretty volatile day. Um, yesterday um, just because of that news event but still holds in this very nice um, rising pattern so watch that we were a little volatile in here we could still uh, bounce off of this trend and move on higher keep a close eye on Nike it's looking pretty decent um, and has been in that you know that nice strong um, retail sector um, trying to move up take a look at NIO I've mentioned this one um, um, here recently um, NIO also had a relatively volatile day yesterday trying to push up and then reversing back down because of the news but we have that opportunity that we could soon and i don't know where this line might come into play we may soon resume that upside trend holding this support in here notice how tight and concise that price action has become because of the upside trend that we have in here that opportunity that that might perk on higher. So watch that close. I've also mentioned FedEx and, and UPS several times, um, and FedEx continues to display a pretty strong upside trend here. And with um, online sales being so strong, I would think that is likely to continue. And UPS um, also firing up in here trying to show some upside here in those charts worth keeping an eye on i believe um, overall been watching starbucks starbucks pretty interesting pattern here ugly whipsaw yesterday with the rest of the market but starbucks trying to break this downtrend in this chart let's keep a close eye on this if it can actually hold up within this upside trend it's putting pressure on that downside uh, trend right now and if we can get those bulls to step up in here there may be an opportunity here soon to pick up a trade and i'll be watching that and potentially for a longer term trade in starbucks so lots of potential charts out there to pay attention to lots of good stocks to be keeping your eyes on but be really really careful with this volatility it is a very dangerous market and not for the faint of heart in any way shape or form and i got to tell you guys never feel ashamed if you feel like this volatility is just too rough on you to stand aside i am largely standing aside i am not doing a significant amount of trading because of this volatility volatility and I'm not going to apologize for that because one of my primary jobs as a trader is to protect my capital. All right, everyone have a great day. I want to wish you all of the best and we'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. Have an awesome, awesome day everyone.